long before Marquette and Joliet came up the Mississippi, long before Lewis and Clark explored the Missouri. The Sac and the Fox kept perfect partnership with this land between the rivers. They called it Iowa, beautiful land. The pioneers who came felt a spirit too. For only 12 years after statehood, a tradition of working together brought a new kind of education to Iowa. Founded in 1858, Iowa State University would change the face of the prairie and reach out to shape the future of the state, the nation, and the world. That partnership of trust and support for Iowa State is today evident everywhere. Alumni Hall, built with gifts from those who graduated in the first three decades of the People's College, has today been beautifully restored and serves as the centerpiece for university admissions. Lake Laverne, the gift of Laverne Noyes, a graduate of Iowa State's first class in 1872, continues today as both a jewel of quiet reflection and a place of enthusiastic student activity. The Memorial Union, built in loving memory of those Iowa Staters who gave their lives in World War I, has evolved over the past 60 plus years and eight editions to become a true center of university life. And standing proudly in the center of these green hills, the Campanile and the bells of Iowa State. The gift of Dean Edgar Stanton, Iowa State's first dean of the junior college and also a member of the first class. This elegant structure stands today as it has for almost a century as the symbol of the university's excellence. <laughs> In its first 120 years, the Prairie College has grown and evolved to become one of the nation's foremost land-grant universities. Teaching and leadership have personified the mission, the faculty, and the graduates of Iowa State. Carrie Chapman Catt, Iowa State's most respected alumna, led the nation's passage of women's right to vote and founded the League of Women Voters. Iowa State takes special pride in the invention of the electronic digital computer by John Atanasoff and Clifford Berry at ISU in 1939, launching the world on a new way of life. George Washington Carver personified the land-grant mission, and he carried the Iowa State extension concept in his life's work. Carver was enrolled as Iowa State's first African-American student 100 years ago. He went on to become one of the nation's greatest educators and agricultural researchers at the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama and is credited with creating movable schools which brought practical agricultural knowledge to the rural South. Iowa State can become the premier land-grant university in the nation. Come, be a partner. Join us in the tradition that ensures this perfect partnership for prominence. It's a good thing that the Campanile clock is now working again because I would like to turn it back 99 years. In 1895, the new women's building at Iowa State was given the name Margaret Hall in honor of Margaret McDonald Stanton, a longtime staff member and wife of then professor and later to be president of Iowa State, Edgar W. Stanton. Two years later, Professor Stanton told the school's board of trustees that he wanted to make a special gift to the, to the college for this great honor to his wife. That gift was to be 
a chime of bells. But as a professor, some things do not change. He could only afford so much. And in a letter to the trustees, he wrote, there is, however, the question of a tower in which to place the bells and the purchase of a clock with, which generally goes with them. I desire that my offering shall be confined to the chimes themselves in order that they may be of superior quality. So plans were made to build a separate bell tower to house the gift from the Stantons. It wasn't the first, and I'm quite certain the last time that Iowa State has received a gift with strings attached. But thank goodness it did. For Margaret Hall burned in 1938, and had the bells been placed in it, it's quite possible that the bells of Iowa State would have died with that fire. Iowa State's most famous campus landmark and most nostalgic symbol of campus life is the Campanile. Built in 1897, it housed the ten original bells given by Professor Edgar Stanton in memory of his wife. And in 1929, Dean Stanton's estate provided for the purchase of 26 additional bells, helping form the Edgar and Margaret Stanton Memorial Carillon. Today, the Carillon consists of 50 bells, and the Campanile stands as proudly as it did nearly a century ago. 
In that time, the Campanile has seen 10 university presidents, the construction of over 125 new buildings, and watched the enrollment grow from a modest 800 students to over 25,000. But the bells of Iowa State have not always chimed happily. In recent years, somber tones rang out to symbolize the long months of captivity for hostages and ISU graduates Tom Sutherland and Terry Anderson. And more recently, the Campanile itself had fallen on hard times. Exposure to the elements gradually took its toll. Difficult economic times forced budget cutbacks, resulting in dwindling resources for repair and maintenance. And retaining the highly skilled talents of a Carol O'Neill proved costly. But the alumni and friends of Iowa State have shown resolve and support for this symbol of excellence. It started with local disc jockey Ken McLeod, who locked himself inside the Campanile's gates until $10,000 was raised, and continued with the generous gifts of thousands of supporters, dismayed by the possibility that the bells would fall silent forever. The spirit of ISU swelled with pride and thanksgiving. And at Visha 92, the university held a ceremony to mark the beginning of the long renovation process. Two years later, on September 25, 1994, another ceremony was held on the lawn at the base of the Campanile, a celebration of the completion of the project, and a long-awaited opportunity to once again hear the bells of Iowa State ring out across the campus. The Bells of Iowa State in 1931, just before I left the English department to launch a career as a travel writer and lecturer. The uh, Alumni Association had announced a contest for a new college alma mater. One day, the um, Alumni Association, Association sent over a manuscript to the English department saying that they liked the music but they didn't like the words and would someone in the department please uh, try a hand at uh, revising the lyrics. Well I took the manuscript home played it over on the piano and I said to Alice gee whiz the music is even worse than the lyrics. <laughs> I could write a better song than this. <laughs> Well, wise guy, she said, uh, why don't you do it? We, there's a hundred dollar prize and we could sure use the money. <laughs> we lived uh, in the old Cranford Apartments right across the street from the campus. And every afternoon, the lovely sounds of the carillon drifted through the woods and across Lake Laverne and into our living room window. Well, that gave me an idea. So I wrote the song, sent the manuscript back to the uh, alumni office, and we bundled our two babies into our rickety old Chev and set out for the Chicago area. Well, about 40 miles east of Chicago, in the Lake Michigan dunes, we found uh, quite a lovely but tiny little green shingle summer cottage in an acre of beautiful oak woods. It was owned by a retired Chicago school teacher who had also been knocked flat by the depression and she had to sell. But she wanted a hundred dollars down, a, a small fortune in those days. But the next afternoon there was a um, big manila envelope from Iowa State uh, College in the mail for me in the little village of Porter. Uh, oh, well, I said, uh, I've, my manuscripts come back. I've lost. So we'll get along somehow. But there was a letter in the, in the envelope. My song had tied for first place with the song of a professional Chicago composer. And they were sending the manuscripts back to us 
uh, in case we wanted to make any changes before the final judging. Well, I can't write or uh, arrange music without a piano. I don't have any technical background uh, in uh, musical composition any more than I have in English. I don't even have a minor in English. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but <laughs> So we picked out the most imposing-looking residents in the little town. I still remember it, a big, middle western, respectable brick with dahlias and cannas in the front yard. And I marched up to the door, knocked, and a sweet-faced, gray-haired old lady came to the door. Um, Madam, I said, uh, do you have a piano? Oh, yes, we already have one. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't want to sell you one, I said, but I need one for a little while in the worst way. And I explained. Well, her face lighted up just like a Christmas tree. For goodness sake, she said, come right in. My daughter, Florence Bussey Smith, used to be head of home economics at Ames. <laughs> Is that, is that your wife and baby out in the car? Tell them to come in. I'll make lunch for them. <laughs> so while old Mrs. Bussey and Alice discussed child raising, uh, I sat at the piano, made a few changes, and a couple of changes in the harmony, and uh, sent the manuscript back to uh, the alumni office. Ten days later, we got a check for $100 in the mail, I marched around to the school teacher, endorsed the check to her, signed the contract, and that night we were unrolling our bedrolls on the floor of our new home. In 1984, I was named an honorary alumnus of the university, and at that time, Carl Hamilton, ISU's grand old man, said to me, Jim, I want you to know what a powerful impact your song has had on the atmosphere and character of this institution and on the lives of its students. It will outlive you by a thousand years if ISU and the human race are still around that long. Well, you, you will be remembered with gratitude too, you who helped to save the, the Campanile and the Carillon. Thanks to you, its inspiring message will continue to echo in the hearts of Iowa Staters and influence their lives for many, many years to come. Green hills for thy throne and for crown a golden melody ringing in the hearts of all who bring thee love and loyalty. Dear Alma Mater, make our spirits great, true and valiant, like the bells of Iowa State. Thank you. <laughs>